pieces of this team has added this in just the past few days? Oh, dream team. <laughs> from Nande to Kamardi. Uh, from Jason to myself, you know. The dream team name, I can't stand. But the all-hype team, love it. Love it. I mean, can't you see the irony in this? I mean, we're getting called the all-hype team by a team that's been overhyped for the last 13 years. That is what you call irony. Uh, how's it feel to have Namdi Asamoa beat for not one, but two touchdowns by an unknown backup named Victor Cruz? Manning fires. Cruz makes the catch, and he is in for the Giants touchdown. Victor Cruz, Namdi plays it perfect. He's got safety help, but look at the strength at the point of the catch by Victor Cruz. Manning on third and two. Pass is caught for a first down, and Cruz breaks free into Eagles territory, and he's still going. Victor Cruz is in for the touchdown. Remember who told you, one and two dream team. I told you, beginning of the end, Eagles fans. Ronnie Brown is the deep back, third and goal. Vic turns, gives to Ronnie Brown, he's hit. And he's dropped for a loss. He almost dropped the ball. In fact, he did drop the ball. There's a scramble for it. Did the whistle blow? 49ers have the ball. The 49ers have the ball. I don't know how it came out of Ronnie Brown. The hard count by Ryan Fitzpatrick. Drew Jukway Parker offside, first down Buffalo. A lot of hype going into the season, but by week five, you knew. You just knew. It's over, Johnny. What's going on, everyone? Coaster here to talk to you guys about dream teams. And I know this, that past video, it looked like I was, or earlier clip, looked like I was trying to bash the Philadelphia Eagles. This is not a video for that. I know that opening might have been funny to some of you, might have been funny to not... Not funny to some of you, but uh, regarding real dream teams. You heard of the dream team? Well, we're the mean team, wussy man. Wussy man. Whoever put that clip in there needs to die. Uh, anyways, uh, going on to the talk, you know, the, the real dream team. It made me look up and think, who are the real dream teams in sports uh, that have happened in our, in our history? So I went back and looked up in, into the internet, did my research, and I looked up a bunch of teams that were champions and looked up who really qualified as a real dream team. And, you know, the closest thing. Of course, by default, you have to win a championship. And who looked the most dominant? Who had the best people on paper that did come through and had great seasons? Maybe it was one season. Maybe it was a dynasty. I did a little bit of research on all four major sports and college basketball. The only one I did not cover of course is uh, college football that's college football is a little complex you know with all all these teams going undefeated and you really you know it's all up for debate how rankings work and stuff so I'm not going to talk about college football but other than that uh, for the four major professional sports and the college basketball I will talk about as who I consider the dream team uh, and of course let's just take a look at the title first. The real dream team comes from the 1992 Barcelona uh, Summer Olympics team uh, from USA that played basketball. Uh, of course, that was a bunch of NBA players plus Christian Leitner, who was uh, the other guy from the dominant college player back in the day. Uh, they won the gold medal. They dominated by 40 points, I think. Uh, that was the first time professionals were allowed to play in the Olympics. Other than that, you know, before it was always college players. Uh, and it was always got for amateurs. That's how the Olympics were back in the day. But uh, as it, it signifies in the 1980 Winter Olympics. Uh, but of course, the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona. Uh, of course, you had a dominant USA team, and they just pretty much owned the rest of the way. That was the dream team because you had all these all stars together, plus Christian Leitner, and pretty much that was your dream team. But now let's go into some dream teams in the professional sports world. So the hockey dream team that I have uh, for the NHL all time would be the Edmonton Oilers uh, from 1983 to 1990. Probably the most one of the most dominant eras in hockey. Uh, I know some people could argue otherwise because of what the Montreal Canadiens have done and what the Islanders did at one point. But 
with what they had, the Oilers were so dominant in such a short time for a then very young team. Uh, of course, you have the great one in Wayne Gretzky. You had Jari Curry. You had Mark Messier on the team at one point. Uh, you had Glenn Anderson. You had Paul Coffey. Those were all some very dominant players. Uh, you know, for this said, they won five Stanley Cups, and one of them was without Gretzky. I remember, I think it was the last one, because uh, they traded him, of course, to Los Angeles. But the Oilers, that's about as dominant as you can get. They learned from the whole miracle in Manchester that happened in the early 80s. You can say, you know, losing kind of creates winning later, and in that case, the Oilers, I consider that the most dominant teams, uh, or dream teams for the, the NHL. Some honorable mention, yeah, you could bring up the Montreal Canadiens in the 1960s and the 40s, 50s. I mean, I know the Canadians have 24 Stanley Cups, I know that. And they, but it, it was during an original six era, of course, where there were less teams. Doesn't feel as solid as uh, the Oilers in the 1980s. I know also the New York Islanders won four straight in a row. And ironically, the Oilers, uh, played them as well, back-to-back -back years in the end of one dynasty, start of another dynasty. The Islanders were an honorable mention, I consider. Uh, the other dream team that I would put in the honorable mention category is the Detroit Red Wings of 2002. Another team that dominated the league when they had Sergei Fedorov. You still had Iserman still playing for the team. Uh, you had just a load of players like Brendan Shanahan. Uh, of course, Lidstrom, who's uh, still there as I'm saying this. Uh, Pavel Dotsik was still considered young, but a lot of great players were on that Red Wings team in 2002, and that that's probably the one that I do consider the dominance out of the uh, four they've won uh, in my lifetime since I've uh, followed the NHL. So, yeah, the Red Wings of 2002, the other honorable mention. So for the NBA, uh, I'm going to go, the dream team I would say would be the Boston Celtics of the 1960s, more like 58 in the 1960s. Pretty much a dominant era once again under Bill Russell and of course coach Red Auerbach. Uh, that, I think they won, I believe, 11 championships in that, that time span. It's about as dominant as it gets. I know the Lakers lost to them a lot during that era too, whether it was in Minnesota or in Los Angeles. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? But uh so uh, other teams that I would consider honorable mention would be, of course, Michael Jordan's three-peats, both of them. The early three-peat with Horace Grant in there, me, making Horace Grant and Scottie Pippen better. Or then there's the second three-peat, of course. Uh, Scottie Pippen and Jordan were pretty much carrying the team with crew coach as the sixth man. Uh, of course, that 96 year, I believe they had like 72 wins. So, uh, yeah, I do consider the Chicago Bulls the other honorable mention in this, but the Boston Celtics from the 60s, I believe, win the distinction of a dream team uh, for the concept, for the NBA. So, dream team goes to the 1960s Celtics. Okay, for baseball, uh, there's just a bunch of teams you can throw out. By default, I can pretty much pick any Yankees team that won a World Series before 1960. I mean, those were all some dominant areas. Oh, there's so many stars. I mean, I can't even name them all off the top of my head. But I know pretty much all those numbers are retired. You know, whether it's Babe Ruth, Roger Maris, D Joe DiMaggio. Um, gosh, so many names out there. Uh, Mickey Mantle. I can just throw out so many names out there. And uh, pretty much you can cite any Yankees team before 1960 if we want to be technical. Uh, some of the other names, though, in the more modern era. I would have to say the 1998 New York Yankees were about pretty dominant as it gets. I uh, had a very loaded team, uh, you know, Tino Martinez, you go with Posada, you still have Jeter, you still got uh, Paul O'Neill, then you have David Wells, you got David Cohn, who I think that season he pitched a perfect game. Uh, yeah, there was just a lot of great players on that Yankee team in 1998, and ironically the one guy that comes through for them was Scott Brocious, uh, one former uh, guy from the A's at one point. Uh, Brocious is the one who came through in 98 the most, uh, that, that World Series. Uh, going on, though, another team that should get honorable mention would be the 1972 Oakland A's. And, of course, uh, that was the last time there was a trio besides the Yankees winning three-peating from 1998 to 2000. The Oakland A's did it from 1972 to 1974. Uh, 72 specifically had a great pitching staff. Uh, you had Catfish Hunter, you had Ken Holtzman, you had Blue Moon Odom, and you had Vita Blue. 
Uh, pretty much those were four uh, pitching guys were solid. You know, the swinging A's were all right. You know, Reggie Jackson contributed later. He had still Sal Bando, Bert Campanaris. Uh, you know, I can go down the line, but they, they didn't have the greatest of stats. But they still were the swinging A's, and they came through. Uh, but the pitching easily are going to be remembered from that 1972 team that beat the Reds, and that's the trio. So honorable mention to the 98 Yankees and 70s of the A's. But pretty much the dream team is any team that was before 1960 that won the World Series for the Yankees just because so many teams back back in the heyday were so dominant. A bunch of those teams had ridiculous video game numbers. All right, so uh, college basketball, it's pretty obvious who wins this debate. UCLA from 1963 all the way to 1975. I know it's different players, it's college, but it's pretty obvious who actually gets this distinction because John Wooden did coach the 88-game win streak as well within those 10 titles that came within 12 years. Uh, it's about as dominant as it gets. Uh, a very great era, legendary era for UCLA basketball. Uh, a lot of great history in, in that. And, of course, the 88-game win streak came actually when they won the title in 1971. They actually had to rebuild and pretty much reload with uh, mostly different players when they went undefeated the year after that. And then, of course, they won another title, and then they lost, and then they won one in 1975. Uh, it's pretty much when John Wooden retired. Now, that streak, as I said, they had to reload uh, after 1971. Uh, Cindy Wicks was on the, the pretty much the start of that streak, and then Bill Walton and Jamal Wilkes were near the end of that streak. Uh, so most of those legendary players that we think of, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Walt Hazard, along with Gail Goodrich, came pretty much before that in the 60s. And uh, that was, of course, when we all know UCLA uh, was, of course, dominant then as well. Uh, but the 88-game win streak, and then the facts, let's not forget, freshmen were not even allowed to play on the varsity squad back in the day, so the youngest player would, on the basketball team would be a sophomore. You wouldn't even see freshmen like John Wall at, on... Who or someone who was a freshman like John Wall on the uh, varsity team. So, 10 championships in 12 years, but that 88 w game win streak from 1970 to 1973 uh, pretty much stands out among the rest. I think we all know what happened there. And uh, that's about as dream team as it gets for college basketball. I don't know who else can match that. Pretty much no one, no one can when it comes to the championships. I know that much. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for college basketball. Now, for the NFL, uh, obviously there hasn't been any dynasty, a true dynasty of winning at least three years in a row. Uh, the only time that happened, of course, would be the Green Bay Packers, which you count an NFL championship plus two Super Bowls that happened in the 1960s. That's the only real dynasty that's happened uh, in the NFL. Other than that, we've seen people win two in a row, but we have never seen someone win three Super Bowls in a row. And I don't know if it will ever happen in our lifetime with the way parity works in this league. Teams can turn around. But going on, you know, dream teams, uh, the one that really comes into mind for me uh, after doing my research is the 1985 Chicago Bears. Uh, the team blew out the Patriots in the Super Bowl 46-10. to They had one of the most dominant defenses ever because they allowed only, I think, 12 points. Uh, if you average it all the games they played, they, they only averaged allowing 12 points a game. Uh, and I think they only lost one game, which was to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, that was a dominant team, as I said. They had Walter Payton on that team, and he had a ridiculous defense full of, you know, Mike Singletary and the Fridge, I believe, was on that team as well. Just a rid The only thing that was average was the quarterback and Jim McMahon, but I believe the 1985 Chicago Bears would be your most dream team of them all just because of that defense they had. I know, you know, the 2000 Baltimore defense is debatable. I know people might bring that up. But the the Bears were so solid that season. Uh, I consider that the ultimate dream team for the NFL. Uh, going on, though, of course, a couple honorable mentions would be the 1989 San Francisco 49ers. They also had a ridiculous defense led by Ronnie Lott and, of course, Charles Haley. And I believe that the 49ers, and, of course, their offense was solid, too. You had Jerry Rice and, of course, Joe Montana. And, of course, they blew out the Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl in their case, so... 49ers, 14-2 and two that year, another uh, honorable mention. Of course, lastly, I'll mention is the 1972 Miami Dolphins. 
the undefeated team uh, with Don Chula, of course. What, what more do I need to say than that? I still think there was some parity, in, or at least some of those close wins, they didn't seem as dominant, but their record speaks for itself. They went undefeated. They're the only perfect team in the NFL, so that's the uh, honorable mention. But the ultimate dream team still belongs to the 1985 Chicago Bears, until told otherwise, in my opinion. So that pretty much concludes my series about dream teams. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, if there are any other teams that I didn't mention, or if you're a college football fan and you can bring debate. You know, don't just mention the team. Mention why they were a dream team or what made them so dominant that maybe I'm missing because there might be something that I didn't see in my research or that you guys see that I didn't see. So let me know if some other dream teams that you thought of that maybe should be worth mentioning or, or that pass what I put on here as the dream team. So that's all I have for you now. Uh, I'll see you guys later. You know, it's always be cheering for my teams. You know, go Raiders and always, but... Let me know what you guys think about this dream teams, uh, the real dream teams, that is. We'll see you guys later.